Good afternoon to you. I am Mark Suddoth here in Wilmington, North Carolina. It is Monday, January 30th, 2023, and today we're going to talk a little bit, maybe even a lot, about the possibility of El Nino coming along as we head towards summer, what that could mean for the upcoming hurricane season, just some different things that we're looking at as more and more people are talking about this across social media. We're going to look at that. We're also going to look at lower 48 weather uh, as cold air is down in the nation's midsection not going to have the same kind of ice and cold that we saw a couple of years ago that was just brutal for areas like Oklahoma and Texas, but the setup is there for some ice and rather cold weather, some power outages, that kind of thing. And then it's going to get very cold in New England, but even as that is happening, no, we are still not looking at any appreciable snow for the Big Apple. They are going to break their record for the longest that it has taken to have measurable snow in a winter season. Um, it's just weird. So here we are. All right. Glad you could join me. Appreciate you jumping in here to give a, a look at what I'm talking about today. We will start with our anomalies map. And this is very important because this helps to sort of set the stage for everything else we're going to discuss. First, there is our La Nina in the tropical Pacific. Colder than average sea surface temperature anomalies there. That is firmly in place. We do have the warm Atlantic. That's still holding on strong for now. But it is this area through here, the state of the El Nino Southern Oscillation Phenomenon, or ENSO, E-N-S-O, that we are going to focus the most on today. Part of that is the SOI. We're going to look at the Southern Oscillation Index. Those numbers are still generally strongly positive for now. Today's daily contributor kind of feeble there at 2.78. And we have seen a downward trend here in the last several days. Why does this matter? Again. Going back to this, when the SOI is strongly positive, you typically have strong trade winds across the tropical Pacific here because your air pressure is lower in the western Pacific over here. So the net flow of air is pretty aggressively towards that lower air pressure, just a general simplification of it. But when the SOI goes negative, you tend to flip that and your net flow of air uh, becomes more westerly in nature. And we call that a westerly wind burst. You can get these from time to time, usually around the 5,000 foot level all the way down to the surface. And that flips the pattern around. When you see that SOI go negative, then you start to see, especially when it's long term and consistent, the trend towards a warmer tropical Pacific or an El Nino. And we're not seeing that happen just yet. Now, as we can go back to the SOI here and see, mostly the numbers have been pretty strong here. The 30-day uh, is still very healthy at 11. We will end the month close to that number. That number will come out tomorrow, and it'll get added to uh, this side of the chart over here. So the SOI not totally reflecting that we're headed towards El Nino yet. And yes, people are talking about it. We go over to Storm 2K, lots of chatter here, people picking up on what folks are saying on Twitter. I want to scroll down to the bottom of this. I'm going to put the link to this thread in today's update so that you can read it yourself. There's a lot of good info here why I like Storm2K. I've been a member of that message board since I believe it was 03. They are one of our partners uh, on Patreon. We do appreciate their support. And it's more than just that, the financial support each month. It is the fact that there are so many smart people here that find the good information that is just very easy to pick out. And uh, this is the one I want to show you here. This is from our friend King Arabian over in Honolulu, Hawaii. And I like this sentence right here. While yes, there are some um, indicators that we could be headed towards a flip, uh, towards a warm ENSO, he says here, let's see what happens in February because the models show an exceptionally strong trade burst all the way into the first week of March. In fact, and I should just change this to red, and I will. The strongest trade burst in the last six months. And what that means is an easterly trade burst, easterly wind still coming through there, keeping the La Nina state in where it is, you know, keeping it there. So this is going to be interesting, and I can show you what that looks like a little bit here on one of the graphics from Tropical Tidbits. Uh, so what are we looking at here? Let's change my colors so stuff will pop out better. Let's use green here to highlight things. This is days one through seven. 
This is the entire globe, our flat Earth. There you go. A Mercator projection map. Here is your tropical Pacific right through here. And these purples indicate your easterly anomalies, your zonal wind anomalies. All right? So just look at it from a very simple perspective. Purple is generally an anomalous wind coming from the east. The red is your anomalous wind coming from the west. You have pretty good westerlies here in the uh, Indian Ocean. And that spills across the maritime continent, but that's pretty much where it ends because look at all of these purples through here over the next week. This is from the CFS, Climate Forecast System. Again, the zonal wind anomaly over the next week or so. Let's move it out to the next two weeks. There is a little bit of what King Arabian was talking about. Look at that massive area of purple and the gradient of it. It's pretty exceptional. You're talking about a very strong west, uh, easterly wind burst. Your westerly winds continue here across the maritime continent coming out of the eastern portions of the Indian Ocean, but not into the tropical Pacific. Also notice pretty strong easterly winds coming through the Atlantic too. That won't promote much warming, but you know, it's February. We're not going to worry about that too much yet. This holds more emphasis on shaping the hurricane season than does this right now. And so the next two weeks, yes, strong uh, easterly winds by week three. Uh, still pretty much the same. A little bit of a spilling over into the western Pacific here of some uh, 5,000 foot westerlies. But we still have the easterlies pretty much dominant in the central Pacific. A little relaxation of the trades, maybe some westerly winds here by week three. This gets towards the end of February. And that's where we'll stop. It's just pretty far out. Uh, but this is a large large climate signal. This is different than trying to forecast. I mean, look, we are looking way out. Um, this ends on the 20th of February, so 21 days out. And you say, well, why you show this when we don't even talk about the weather out beyond five days? Because these are larger puzzle pieces that are easier for the models to see. They don't always get it right, but this is different than trying to forecast where that winter storm is going to be that we see in the models 10 to 12 days out, you understand, or a hurricane or whatever. These puzzle pieces much easier to deal with than your day-to-day -day weather. So it's interesting, as King Arabian pointed out, back over here, yes, that is an exceptionally strong easterly wind burst that we are seeing in the guidance there over the next couple to three weeks or so. All right, moving on along, this was the CFS, speaking of that model, forecast for the INSO region that we most closely watch, the 3.4 area of the tropical Pacific. Let me just show you where that is real quick. That's generally uh, talking about this area uh, roughly right through here. And right now it's in La Nina State, as we can see there. CFS forecasting this to uh, moderate uh, earlier in the month. This was the January 3rd forecast. And let's skip ahead to the end of the month where we are now. And it's a little bit warmer, as you can see. We've moved out into time a little bit. See, I've left my little line there, Isn't that nice and clever. So a little bit warmer overall, but not substantially so with the ensemble mean. That's that green area right there that I'm highlighting. Some of the most recent members here are pretty aggressive. We'll see. We'll see. As we get towards uh, and through February, I think the key here, if we don't get a strong westerly wind burst in the uh, tropical Pacific, we're not going to start tipping into the favor of El Nino anytime soon. Now that doesn't mean I don't think we're going to have one, but El Nino doesn't always mean no hurricanes. Let's talk about that briefly real quick. You might start seeing uh, people say El Nino's coming, therefore not much worry for hurricanes because it typically reduces the ACE score, uh, the amount of energy that's out there. Well, I would just say look back at 2022, we were forecast to have a very high A score. We were under our normal A score, and yet we still had Ian, we still had Fiona, and others that have impacted the Atlantic Basin pretty significantly. We really are interested in where the hurricanes that do form end up. These different things help to drive the numbers, but the numbers are not what matters when it, turn, when it comes to us. How do they impact us? And remember, as I often suggest, look at the weather in a selfish perspective. How will this impact me? 
And right now, in terms of hurricane season, this doesn't have any impact on you that I can see just yet. All right, looking on towards the Atlantic Basin real quick, uh, as I talked about at the beginning of today's update, yes, the Atlantic generally running warmer than average, but we saw that those trades are going to be pretty strong here across the deep tropics. So we might see some cooling through here. We'll watch as that progresses over the next few weeks. Right off of Africa, though, and even over here along the Canary Current off the coast of Africa, Morocco vicinity, the Canaries and the Iberian Peninsula, warmer than average. We don't have that cold Canary Current spilling down off the coast of Africa just yet, but it's only the end of January. It's not the end of July or August, so it really doesn't matter yet. Just something to keep an eye on. It is warm now. Will it stay that way? Warm compared to average. Will it stay that way as we get into hurricane season? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. A little bit of warming in the eastern Pacific uh, here, but over in the central and western Pacific, as I've shown you, the La Nina still firmly in place. All right, let's go to lower 48 weather here real quick. Winter, yeah, still very much winter. I saw that Peter Sinks, Utah, was in the minus 50 to minus 60 uh, temperatures today, something like that. I saw a tweet about it. Typically one of the colder areas where the air pools, uh, like a sink, it does. The air is dense, it settles in that valley, and it was very cold up there. And then down in South Florida here, nice and warm. Uh, but in the mid areas, the mid part of the country, that's your battle zone, where you have cold air down at the surface. Cold air is dense. The warm air rides up and over that cold, dense air. When you have moisture, you wring that out and you get ice. Some snow, if the cold air column is deep enough, but in a lot of these cases it's not. And so we're having ice storm problems in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and areas of the um, southern plains and the deep south the northern parts of the Deep South, Arkansas, through parts of the Mississippi Valley, and even in the Ohio Valley, just a kind of a messy day. It's not brutal, widespread like we saw, I guess that was 2021 or so, right, where we had that terrible ice storm in Oklahoma and Texas. It's not like that, but it is impactful. Just keep an eye on it. And you know what these colors are right through here? These are wind chill warnings. And when those are up for areas that typically have cold winters anyway, you know it's really cold. There's a meme I saw recently that says, you know it's cold outside when you go outside and it's cold. That shade of blue there, that's cold. It really is. So just pay attention to that. I mean, you know, if you live there, you know. All right, uh, real quick looking at the GFS here, the operational over the next few days. We'll just put this into motion using the arrow keys. Yes, your greens are rain, your pinks and uh, blues are your frozen precip. And a few bouts of the frozen precip there that you can see for parts of Texas and elsewhere, but mostly rain. And you notice too, nothing over here. I'm going to circle this for you. There's the big apple right in there. No snow forecast for that area anytime soon. We're out to 112, 14, 20 hours. That's five days. Now, it's not going to be snowing, but that is a huge area of cold high pressure coming out of southeast Canada. Look at that. 1050 millibar high, whew, very, very cold, dense cold air that'll ooze down out of Canada. A lot of that air will get trapped on the eastern side of the Appalachians, or Appalachians, however you prefer to say it, the bottom line, no matter what you call it, that's going to be cold, but there's no storm coming in. And, you know, if you like that kind of thing, you don't want there to be snow, well, this is the pattern for you. Your static electricity will be high with cold, dry Canadian air but no real big storm systems to take advantage of that, so to speak. As we move out towards about a week's time, now things start to get a little interesting. This is a week away, and again, these are your finer detailed weather systems, unlike the CFS that's looking at the larger pieces. We'll have to wait and see, does this come to fruition with the potential for some fr uh, frozen, my Telestrator acting up on, it, on me. Frozen precip east of the mountains, up the I-95 corridor, maybe New York City. We'll see. Uh, again, that's almost a week out. There's fully a week right there. We'll see. That cold air could get trapped again on the east side of the mountains here, especially in the Piedmont areas. So you have to watch this for the potential of ice and snow. Now let's just back it up a little bit and go to the west. We notice much in the way of precip out west. Yeah, a few storms do come in out here, bringing more 
uh, low elevation rain, high elevation snow for California and the rest of the Cascades, Washington, Oregon, and vicinity. Even some in the Rockies from time to time where it's badly needed, of course. But nothing major like we saw to start the year with those powerful atmospheric rivers. Just more of your run-of-the-mill garden variety winter storms coming in to the west. All right, and then real quick looking at the temperatures. This is today. Your anomalies, departures from normal. Wow, that's your cold air. This is your warm air relative and, you know, like real and real life temperatures too, not just departures, but actual temperatures. Watch how this changes though. We stay generally warm in the deep south until that cold air comes out of Canada. You can see it right there. Look at those anomalies. That's just ridiculous. Some of these running close to 28, almost 30 degrees below the long-term average. This is at two meters above the ground and that settles. That big area of cold air slides across Canada, settling in southeast Canada to northern New England uh, yeah, that's going to be really cold here coming up in about five days. Whew! But no big storms to take advantage of that. And then look, we get a nice February thaw. Yeah, they call it a January thaw. It was pretty much warm all of January, mostly. But look at February as we start there a week out. Generally speaking, maybe a big warm up in the nation's midsection with some lingering cold air in parts of the southeast. Now the good news too, no severe thunderstorms expected over the next several days so we won't even look at the individual panels because no severe storms. That's good. So at least we don't have to worry about any severe weather. Kind of a just a mixed bag week ahead. No major storms, no ridiculous cold air outbreaks until we get towards the weekend and then yes it is going to be, well I mean we have the very cold air in the northern plains but they're used to that. We don't have anything entering into areas where we're not used to it. So there's no major problems right now. And look again, individually, yes, there could be some problems depending on where you are. So just be aware of it. That's what I like to do in these updates is keep you aware and informed with everything related to at least what I look at from hurricane season stuff to lower 48 weather and sometimes even international news, but nothing to, to speak of right now. All right, all right, that's it for me for today and this, uh, the week and the month. We'll see you again um, in about a week's time as we get into early February, and we'll see what's happening with everything at that point in time. Okay, have a good rest of your week as always. Thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track. That's us. We'll see you again in about a week.